Good afternoon, Peter Sidwell here and welcome to Masterclass Junior. It is Monday afternoon and we are ready to cook. It's Wednesday. It's we oh, sorry, it's Wednesday. Crikey, the days are just all a blur at the moment. Apologies, it's Wednesday. So, are you ready to cook? Yeah. Yeah? Not many cooks now to go. Back to school next week. Very excited. Right, okay, so we're going to cook a Spanish omelette. This was actually a request from one of our viewers, so um, we hope you like it. Spanish omelette is a beautiful thing, um, and when done really, really well, it's amazing. But there are a few things that people kind of go wrong on, so I'm going to make sure that we cover all those. We show you how to make an amazing, traditionally inspired omelette. Spanish omelette, but then we're going to show you a few things to serve with it. We're going to talk about a few different things. Emily's got a few questions she's lined up for me. But if you have any questions yourself, throw them straight onto Facebook page and we will have a good old chat about them while we have a cook. Won't we? Yeah. Right, potatoes first. Ready with those? So we're going to do this in a certain kind of order to make sure that we get the frittata made while we're on live into the oven. And then the last bit of cooking is done. I have another one in there ready to show you, so don't worry about that. But yours will just take a little bit longer, give you a chance to tidy up if you're cooking live with us and get ready for lunch or dinner even. Right, okay, so you're peeling the potatoes. It's really important that we cut these small so that they cook in time, okay? So first of all, I'm going to season up my water. A little bit of salt in there just to get the flavours going. My food is all about layers of flavour. Okay, are we all right? Do you want me to do some with uh, a knife as well? Just to speed up the process. I think we probably should have peeled these before we started, but anyway. It won't take forever. No, it won't take long. It's good, your peel is great because it, it gets everything off really easily. But just to speed it up a little bit, we'll go with a knife as well, right? So, any, go on Emily, fire me off a question. Or are you about to jump to a camera behind the scenes? Sorry. No, it's all right. So Emily um, is my food photographer actually um, and she does lots of beautiful photography and edits all the recipes that we post every week on Facebook. So here in our test kitchen we actually create recipes for uh, Masterclass and for Kitchen Craft um, and we test them out, we cook them, we film them, we photograph them, we edit them and we upload them for you guys on social media and things like that. So she's actually controlling all the cameras. She's whizzing around with different... Are you having a little bit of problems with cables? Not You're all right? You're all good? She's cool as ice. Cool as ice today. Um, so, yeah, Emily's kind of controlling, like, command, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, right. Can you pop those peelings into the bin? Oh, I have a question. Good. Um, what peelings can you use other than potatoes, maybe cauliflower? Of course you could use cauliflower, what you'd need to do is make sure it's cooked. Um, I actually make an amazing a recipe called spaghetti fritter. So in our house we always have loads of leftover pasta because we cook too much pasta all the time. Um, where, so it's one of your favourites as well isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we're going to cut the potato in half long ways, steady, and then we're going to cut them into little sort of half centimetre pieces because I want them to cook quite quickly. So getting back to it, yes, you can use cauliflower. What I would do is break it up into little florets, put it into a bowl with a little bit of salt and pepper and some water and put it in the microwave and get it like half cooked before you did this. Um, because you want to make sure that it, it's got a sort of tender bite to it. So we're just going to cut them nice and thin, little oh, slices, thin. Okay. yeah, like that. You could actually do this as well with potatoes, you know, leftover cooked potatoes, new potatoes that you've got left over from the night before. You could do it with roast potatoes if you wanted to. Um, so it's a good way to use them up, but obviously we're making a Spanish omelette from scratch. So we're using Maris Piper potatoes, peeled and into half centimetre slices. Right, let's get that up to boil. Last piece, well done Pops, let's get some good chopping. 
Do, 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 do. Right, okay, let's get this cooking. Thank you very much, Pops. Right, so we're going to give those a boil for about eight minutes, okay, while we do our onions. Now, the onions are really, really important that we get these right with the Spanish omelette because a traditional Spanish omelette is just potato and onion. So, quite humble ingredients, quite sort of... You know, there's nothing too exciting about them, but the, if you cook them right, they're absolutely delicious together. So, Pops, we're going to talk about onions, mm -hmm. your favourite ingredient to chop. So, we've peeled them already and we've left the core on the top, haven't we? Yeah. Why do we do that? Um, do you remember? Because we don't want to eat the core. Because it holds everything together. So when we cut them in half, you can see that we've got a core there that holds the onion together. Uh, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. If you cut the onion, if you cut the core off when you're peeling it, hang on, wait. Um, it will fall apart once you start. Okay. So I'm just gonna slice my onion really thin. So I want it as thin as you can possibly manage, pops. Yeah. So you push the knife through and back and you take your time, okay? Like that? Yeah, that's good, really good. So what I've done is, if you can see, can you see how thin I've cut them, Poppy? Yeah. That's what you're aiming for, and that comes down to practice. Like that. Okay? Like that. Yeah, so, can you see that, Emily? Yeah. Am I using, which camera am I going to? You are using the right camera. I'm on this one, am I? Yeah. So they're super thin. Now, the thinner the onion, the sweeter it will be, okay? So what we're going to do is nice and thin. Now I've been chopping onions every day for 25 years, so I am pretty good at it, all right? And everyone asks me all the time at the cookery school, you know, on stage when we're doing demonstrations, how on earth do you cook as, cut onions as thin as you do, as quick as you do? And it is practice and a really good knife. A knife that holds its sharpness, that has a nice weight to it, it's all about a good knife. Oh dear, are you crying? Has it got you? <laughs> Every time, doesn't it? Right, that'll probably do actually for now. Okay, because they're pretty good onions. Now in the recipe I've put two onions. Onions are all different sizes. You want two big onions, four medium onions, you know? You want a decent amount because you want to fill this pan. Okay, right. Okay. Um, can you use red onions instead of white onions? Totally use red onion if you want. They are sweeter um, and they are more sort of in season in the summer. But yeah, why not? You could use spring onions if you really wanted to, but you'd have to use a lot. Right, can you, what? They've even got me. Can you just wash that chopping board? Over there. Yeah, they are really strong, but that's okay. That is okay. Right, let's get a tea towel. Right, now when you're cutting, cooking onions, you need to salt them because onions are full of water. And when you add salt to your onions, it will draw the moisture out and it will mean they'll caramelize and that go nice and golden and sweet. Now, Emily, when we talked about the spaghetti fritter, did you manage to find the recipe link? Right, so when somebody sent a question about can you use something else instead of potatoes, I talked about using spaghetti. Um, and now we have a recipe video for spaghetti fritter, and I'm going to, Emily's going to post it in the comments for you because it's a face, it's a kitchen craft recipe and it's really good. Great for using leftovers. You love it, don't you, with a bit of ketchup, don't you? Yeah. Right, so which camera are we on at the moment, Emily? Right, we're on the wide. So, the onions are just starting to catch and colour. That's what we want. Because we want to cook these down so they're nice and sweet. They're strong onions today, aren't they? Strong. Even made you cry. Even made me cry a little bit. Right, potatoes are cooking. So, just grab a spoon for me with holes. And then we can have a look and see how tender the potatoes are. This one. Yep, that will do nicely. Do you want to lift a few potatoes out for me? And then I could just have a carefully have a little look, right, a little bit longer, maybe two more minutes with those. Okay? So, 
With our Spanish omelette, what we're going to serve this with is a really nice mixed leaf salad and we're going to make an aioli, which is a garlic mayonnaise. But to kind of keep the Spanish theme going, we're going to add a little bit of smoked paprika, which works really well. We tried it at lunchtime. Are you all right? Emily's running around like a mad thing today and that's either a good thing or a bad thing. I'm never quite sure, but she says she's all right, so she's all right. Right, okay, let, let that be. So we're gonna make a salad dressing now. Come and have a look. So with a salad dressing, it's really important to work on ratios. Now it doesn't matter if you are using vinegar, lime juice, lemon juice, grapefruit juice, whatever, yuzu even, that's a, a citrus fruit from Japan. It's about ratios of, th of three to one, okay? So one part vinegar or acid or something sharp to two parts olive oil, okay? So that makes up our whole. I did fractions today with my son, so I'm on fractions. So grab a tablespoon from underneath, and I want two tablespoons of vinegar. So how many of, that's a teaspoon, Diane. Two tablespoons of sherry vinegar. Now sherry vinegar works really well because it's a Spanish vinegar and we're very Spanish inspired. So we're using smoked paprika, we're using sherry vinegar. If you haven't got sherry vinegar, that's okay. Go for red wine vinegar, cider vinegar, whatever you want. Right, Pops, that's all right, I'll get that. So if you've got two spoons of vinegar, how many of olive oil do we want? One, two, three, four. Four. Oh my God, get her back to school. It's all I can say. There's one. Tip. Two. Have we got any questions coming today? Three. Stop. There we go. Well, could you do it as a dressing for your salad? If you don't like sherry vinegar, or if you haven't got any vinegar, oh, is it? lemon juice and olive oil makes the best dressing. What I would say is, something like this, just leave that for a second down because it's quite noisy. Make more than you need. If you've got an empty jam jar, make a load of dressing up, put it in the fridge. Because it's not going to go off, it's oil and vinegar, and it's always there. And then you can just add a little bit, like, on new potatoes, a little bit of olive, a little bit of salad dressing is delicious. It really is. Can you see these uh, onions, Emily, for me? Yeah. Just borrow that. Spread your onions out as thinly as you can because you've got to cook them and get them really nice and sweet so that you haven't got a strong onion flavour. You've got a, like a caramelised sweet flavour to it. Right. Let's have a little seasoning in there, please, Poppy. In there? In here. So we're going to season our dressing. Salt. Just a little, pe little salt, little pepper, that's it. That'll do. Just give it a little shake around. Pepper. Yep. Right, and we're going to have a little taste of this. The only way to know, that's plenty, thanks. The only way to know if this is right for you, not for me, for you, is to taste it. Is it sharp enough or is it, you know, is it oily enough? If it's too sharp, add more oil. If it's not sharp enough and it tastes quite oily, add more vinegar. So we need to have a little taste, Pops. You ready? You like vinegar, don't wait, you? Yeah. Wait, wait, open it. I'll put these on the pan. Good call. Right. So, little taste. Right, Pop, what do you think? Tiny bit. Is that vinegary or is it oily? Which one is it? Oily. Right, so let's add a tiny little bit of vinegar. Not too much. That's fine. Right, that'll do. Get rid of your spoon. Now, I've got some beautiful salad leaves here. All I'm going to do is sit them. I've made enough dressing for this salad. Is sit them on top like this. Can you do the rest of that, Pop? Are those potatoes ready? Yeah, I think... Um, you think I they're ready? Bring some up. They're not... Sure. Let's have a little look. Just about there. Right, don't mix your salad greens. Leave them sat on top of the dressing. If you mix them, they will automatically start to wilt quite quickly, and we don't want that. Right, Pops. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a second pan out. Pop that straight on the heat. Turn that off. 
We do. So I've got a measuring jug there. Can you crack me five eggs? We'll do a full omelette, which is going to serve four. Okay. Hello. Right. So Shallots would totally work. They take quite a while because you'd need quite a lot of them. But they're sweeter and milder than a white onion and a red onion. But they're really nice. So I'm just going to lift out my potatoes and I'm going to add them to my onions and just let them sit for a minute. Okay? And they're ready while we get the egg mixture done. So we ought to talk about next week, haven't we, Emily? The plan. So next week, in the, here in the UK, the kids are going back to school on Monday, mostly. Pops is going back to school Wednesday, so next week's a big week for everyone. Um, and going forward, we wanted to make sure that we carried this on because people seem to be really, really enjoying it. We're enjoying doing it, um, and we cook every day for dinner anyway, so we might as well carry it on where we can. Now, Kids have all got schoolwork and so on and so forth. So what we've decided to do is we're going to do supper at 6 on a Wednesday. So every Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we are going to cook something amazing, aren't we? So that means it gives you time to get home from school, do a bit of your schoolwork if you've got it, and then I'll set the kitchens up, create an amazing recipe, and we'll cook it together with me, Pops, Thomas sometimes, as was. And then we're also going to make a program during the week to broadcast on a Saturday morning for you. So a Saturday kitchen style program, a couple of recipes, um, different things to cook for the weekend. Because the weekends have become really important for people now. You know, it's time for the family. All of a sudden we're back at school, school runs, all sorts of things. You know, life hopefully is going to get back to normal. Yes, please. They're just over there. Do you know what to uh, no, a whisk would be great, thank you. In fact, I've got one here, Poppy, sorry. The question is No, I haven't, I lied. <laughs> it's there, in the... Yes, of course. Um, somebody's asked, would wraps be good for the omelette? Oh, yeah, now, a tortilla wrap omelette's amazing. Um, I, I have, like, my go-to recipe, if, if I'm feeling a bit... We've had it at work quite a few times, is two egg omelette, whisk it together, pour it into a hot pan with a little bit of oil, slice chorizo, Four slices on top of your omelette, let it cook for about a minute and then take a tortilla wrap, lay it on top of the app, wrap even, lay it on top of the omelette, take the pan and just do that. And it comes out and you roll it up and you have the most amazing egg and torito tortilla wrap. They are so good. Pretty sure we've got the recipe for there on the Facebook page as well because I remember doing that at the very beginning of lockdown. Um, right, stop. Yeah. The eggs are free range. They're actually from a um, chicken farm up at Embleton, which is about 10 miles up the road. Um, I live in the Lake District. I am blessed with local produce. Um, and I, I can, this is why I moved to the Lake District, because just to get the sh access to all the amazing local produce. It's a chef's playground here where I choose to live. But it's really easy, I think, nowadays to get hold of so many great products. But I always go for free range and I always buy local where I can. So, I'm going to pour... ...building the layers of flavour. We've got a drizzle of olive oil in the pan. Now, Pops, pour it in. Nice and careful. Good. Now, don't touch it. Get yourself a nylon spatula. spatula. There you go, Emily, I got it right. This. Okay, now, and that's nylon, which is the black one. So, we've got our potatoes and our onions here. And now all I'm going to do is spread them, okay? So you get a little bit of both. You could do this well in advance if you wanted to. So that when you've got the time, you can just pull all the ingredients together. Yes, you can totally freeze it. It's a really good dish. In Spain, they will actually serve it cold. Um, I prefer it warm. So just with the back of a spoon, just flatten all the ingredients down. 
into the egg mixture. Now, if you wanted to serve more people, put more eggs in uh, and really flood the pan, okay? That's it. And then it is ready just to pop into the oven. Now, Pops, so are you going to put it in the oven for me? And I'm going to get the other one out. Bit. Yeah. Bit. Can you manage it or do you want me to do it? All right, nice and careful, that's it. Good, well done. Right, hang on, hang on, hang on. So I'm gonna get the other one out of the oven. Got metal handles and they're incredibly non-stick. So for me as a chef, that's really important. Whoa. Okay. Can you freeze it, Pete? Yes, you can freeze it, no problem. Right, let's make our aioli, okay? So that little tub there, it's just a posh name, French name for garlic mayonnaise. It's really good, okay? Works really, really well. Uh, yeah, spoon for mayonnaise. So, four tablespoons of mayonnaise into there for me. Can you add other spices? You yeah, you could add, if, if you want to make it different, absolutely fine. I've just taken aioli, which is just mayonnaise and garlic. You put as much garlic in as you like. All I would say is put a little bit in, taste it, add more if you want it. But don't forget, if you're making more than you need, it will get stronger in flavour the longer it sits in the fridge, okay? Yes, so I want um, one teaspoon, please. Um, I have got a question for you. Go on then. Um, I'm, like I was funny about my orange cheese, I'm funny about my mayo. What can you use instead of mayo? Well, do you know what? I, I've got an amazing recipe for a paprika salsa. And what you do is you take... Um, sweet red peppers, you roast them with garlic, sherry vinegar, olive oil, cumin seeds, um, coriander, um, and olive oil, and it makes the most incredible Spanish salsa. Yes, grate that straight in, please, Poppy. Um, and it's just delicious, but you could also serve it with a bit of sour cream, if you like. Um, I, I would even dare to say a little bit of brown sauce is probably a bit cheeky, but not on brand but really quite delicious. So, frittata, look at that pan, non-stick. No, just one. There we go. Somebody's asked you, um, if you haven't got a pan with a metal handle. Yes. How, how could you Grill it under sort of medium to low oven, but cook it for longer on the hob, okay? Cook it sort of halfway through on the hob, low heat, let it tick over. The key is, when I made it, I poured the omelette in first. The eggs went in. Then the filling went on top, which allowed the egg mixture to sort of fill up and And I only put it in the oven because I can. You could put it under the grill. So you do half in the pan and half under the grill. Um, and then if your pan, if it becomes nice and loose in your pan, you could transfer it to a baking tray if you can. Um, and the way that I transfer things is more like this. So you put your plate or your chopping board on top and then you just turn it over, and there you go. We have a, can I, is that in a good is place? On the chopping board. On the chopping board, it's okay. Nice. That is where we would serve it, so that's got a really nice, firm shape. You could cool this down when we can all go out and picnic, you could chop it up into wedges, um, and take your dressing with you, and take your salad with you, uh, separate, don't put the dressing with it, but the way that we're going to serve it is I'm going to cut it up first because it would be really messy if I did it the other way. So into half. So this is also gluten-free, this recipe. And it is dairy-free. Um, obviously, eggs aren't dairy, but a lot of people kind of think about eggs as dairy, but technically they're not. There is no dairy in this, but there is eggs in it, obviously. So we're going to cut this into nice little wedges. Do you want to do this? You want to cut them into thirds, so three, so that into thirds, that one, that one, and that one, and then we'll deal with it, all right? Nice and carefully, good fractions practice. Every day's a school day. I'm not doing <laughs> fractions right now. No, you should know your fractions. I do. Um, was there anything else we needed to cover? We've talked about next week. So we're going to be supper at six next Wednesday, and then we're going to have a program, we're going to launch a program for the weekend on Saturday morning. 
Um, and we've got loads of new recipe ideas, but if there are things you would really like us to cover and to cook and cook with you, um, please let us know on the comments. I mean, since, um, since we went live with Max and Paddy and Harry the other day, we've had lots of new faces um, on, the, on the Facebook feed, which has been brilliant. So thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, and in return, please ask me, what would you like us to cook? And we'll create recipes, won't we? And we'll cook them together. Um, and hopefully we'll make um, some amazing dishes together. Right, so mayonnaise. Ioli goes on there. I had this in a really amazing uh, Spanish tapas restaurant in London once, and I absolutely loved it. It was really, really good. And it's just that little extra hit of flavor and richness that counters the sort of the vinegary salad dressing on top. It is, for barbecues, amazing this. Um, and what I would serve with this actually is, I've got this fantastic recipe for um it's with man i would serve this with manchego and a roasted red pepper um salsa salad and emily is just launching the video onto the masterclass facebook page now so that it's exactly where you want it at the right time so if you want to serve this if, if you're not making it now and you want to make it tomorrow or whatever have a look at that video she's posted the recipe the video is the perfect accompaniment to this so, Poppy, can you just mix those salad leaves together for me? Yeah. Your hands are clean, aren't they? Yeah. Then, yeah. I've also posted the link to the spaghetti. Great. So, Emily has posted the spaghetti fritter link on the... Um, have you put that in the comments? I'll put it in the comments. I'll in the comments. Out. And then she has also launched the uh, manchego and red pepper salsa salad to go with this, if you want to have a go. Right. Are you going to put a big handful on there? Go for it. Put the lot on. That's it. Lovely. I mean, look at that. It glistens, doesn't it? Doesn't that look appetizing? That'll do, Pops. Let me just remove that. There we go. Hopefully, Emily's going to tell me I've been in time today. I haven't run over. Almost. Oh, good. Right. Can you see that all right? Yeah. All right. Lovely. So that is our uh, Spanish omelette that was requested by one of our viewers. So hopefully that has sort of demystified how to make a really, really good Spanish omelette. And then I've just added a couple of things that will just make it taste amazing. But you can serve it with or without them. But thank you very much for watching. Um, it's been great that you've tuned in. We will be back on Friday. We're going to make the ultimate mac and cheese. One of our, again, another family favourite, is it not? Yeah. Love a good mac and cheese, don't we? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and then next week we'll be back on Wednesday for supper at six.